Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be continuing from our previous video in our looking into the log4 shell vulnerability. That little remote code execution exploit that's in the Java logging library log4j2, which allows remote code execution on a vulnerable application. In the previous video, we showed how we could go out and get a file from a control server onto the vulnerable application. In this video, I'm going to show how we would get a reverse shell on to the vulnerable application that would allow us to basically go in and... Um, just do what you do when you get reverse shells. So without further ado, the first thing that we need to do is get all vulnerable application going. So with that, we run that, we get our Spring Boot vulnerable application going. That's all started. Now, now we're going to get our LDAP server. Our what our LDAP server that we're controlling. So when we send our curl command to the vulnerable application, it's going to include basically a command that says, hey, execute this that goes out to our LDAP server and our LDAP server then will essentially go and grab our reverse shell which we'll see here in a second. So we have our LDAP server up and running. Now here's the important part where we have to uh, create our reverse shell. I have it already created, as you can see here uh, with this ELF file, but the way you, have, you would create this is, let's see here, paste the selection, there we go using MS Venom, we get our L host and our L port, our listening host, listening port, and then we create a file, um, an executable linking for, uh, file format, and get it into the rev.elf. And so that's essentially what we need to do there. And uh, the next thing that we need to do once we've created this is be able to provide a server that uh, is provides access to this ELF file. So that's why we're using this Python 3 command, get an HTTP server up and running, so that actually the LDAP server will go and do all its uh, fun stuff that it does uh, in order to access and get the ELF file or get the, yeah, get the ELF file, our reverse shell, onto the vulnerable application. Next thing we need to do, we need to get a netcat listener, and this is basically going to be listening for when we execute and get that reverse shell on the web application. That, this is how we're going to access that. So we need to go ahead, and I just picked 9001 as a uncommon port, so we are waiting and listening for that. Finally, this is the point of, this is the big kahuna, so to speak. This is where we're going to generate a curl command and get our reverse shell. But first, I just want to show, uh, this is the command that we are going to have in base64. Basically, wget to our uh, Python, that Python 3 HTTP server that we're running that has access to it and basically change it to an executable and so forth once it gets on to that. So we are getting from this and putting it onto the vulnerable application. Now, here's the curl command, and here's that big base, that command we just saw, that wget. This is that in base64 encoding in order to get that um, into a manageable format in order to uh, be able to have that parsed out and interpreted and, and so forth. So um, here is the 
time to see if it worked. But again, just real quick, we're putting it into the, we're being able to change the header information uh, of this git command. When we curl, that's talking about the JNDI, that, that Java piece and our LDAP server, et cetera, et cetera and everything else and then here's that w git command and now let's see if we can't get a reverse shell all right let's check we have as we can see a successful git command came back in to get this our reverse shell and that was successful let's go to our netcat listener and let's see if this works. Oh, look at that. Root ID. Root. So, in this video, we showed how to demonstrate obtaining a reverse shell through the log4shell vulnerability. Thank you. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe and like button. See you in our next video. Thank you.